Welcome. Thank you for joining me today on my YouTube video. My name is Heather Day and I make silverware jewelry out of spoons, forks, serving trays, and many other different things. Copper pipes, copper wiring, all kinds of different things. I'd like to welcome you today and um, I belong to a few forums of ladies that do similar type of things as what I do. And uh, they've been wondering about disc cutters and textures and stuff like that. So I thought today maybe what I could do is give you a demonstration from start to finish of making a pair of earrings just like these out of a spoon bowl. Now this is what I've started with. So here's my spoon bowl and I've textured it and I've flattened it and I've cut it all out and I've domed it. And I've done everything with it. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how to do this so that many of you that have questions on how to do it, you'll kind of, it'll be able to answer a few of your questions. So let's get started. So first thing first, I wear my glasses. So, but if you have safety glasses, because we are dealing with metal. So I'm going to get my chair out of the way and I'm going to zoom in in here. And I'm going to take this regular teaspoon. I'm going to start out with flattening it. Then we're going to move to the texturing. And then I'm going to move into doing the disc cutters and all of that stuff and then the doming. So step by step. So let's get started. Get my chair out of the way here first. So the first thing I do here is I have the flattening unit here on my Arbor Press. Hopefully you can see it there. It's just like a little disc that's on the, t on the very tip. Now that's a better angle right there so you can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, I've got a bench block on here that I've mounted and I have, this is, um, system is from Flat Wearable Artisan Jewelry, Suzanne Angle in, uh, the U S that I bought it from. I am in Canada. So, uh, to keep that in mind for exchange rate and duty and everything else. So anyway, um, I have an extension on my Arbor Press. It's just a regular Arbor Press. So I got mine from Busy Bee, but you can get them from Harbor Freight in different places. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower my, my ram, as you can see right there, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a kiss. I'm not pushing it all the way down. See, as you can see, I haven't flattened it, because if you flatten it directly down, you, you may end up with kinks, which you can work out, but it's more of a pain. I start in one area, and then I flatten it down, bend my handle down, and then I'm kind of working my way around the spoon bowl so that it's giving me a nice, flat surface and there's not a lot of wrinkles as you can see and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to flatten the other side as well so we've got a nice flat surface to start to work with so there we go as you can see it's nice and flat there's not a lot of wrinkles there's not a lot of dimples so like I said just do start slow and then work your way around the spoon bowl all right, so now the next step, I'm going to move my camera over to the other side of the Arbor Press because that's all we're doing on this section right now. We're going to move to the texturing side of it. So I'm going to move my camera over and we'll get set up over here. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Now, if you have a rolling mill, you would have to cut this off at the throat and you would have to roll this through the mill to thin this out so it's a consistency from here to here. But as you can see, this is thicker here, so you'd have to roll that out thinner if you're using the rolling mill plates and stuff like that uh, in order to get a proper texture right across it. I have a rolling mill, but sometimes I find it quicker because I'm not thinning this out. Because usually what I will do is I will take two spoon bowls the ex and texture them the exact same so that, as you can see on the back of this, I've already started to mark for my earrings so that they're out of the exact same spot on the areas of the spoons. And then out of this section, I will do another thing and then do the same thing on this. So that way they are even. I can put them through the rolling mill, but it takes a little bit. Mine's a manual and it's hard on my arms and my back and stuff like that. So anyway, so what I do is I clamp, um, this is my bench block right here, and I have clamped one of the pancake or the uh, rolling mill dies onto it with a clamp. So it's basically, let's just bring this down so you can see it a little bit better. It's basically just clamped right onto my bench. Hopefully you can see that okay. So that's all I have done with it. I've just clamped it in place there. 
Now I'm going to use, hopefully my camera won't jump around here when I'm hammering, I'm going to use a round ball peen hammer. And I'm just going to lay my spoon face down onto the, pan, uh, onto the die and I'm going to hammer texture, but just be careful of this outer edge. You don't want to catch your spoon on that because it'll hammer it down and it'll crease it for good. So hopefully my camera will stay in place here as I'm hammering this. So now, can you see the texture pattern? Hopefully that'll zoom in a little bit better. You can see some of the pattern on there. Just like that. It didn't take much effort at all. So I'm going to continue, and I'm going to continue to hammer this. So, I got lots of texture, lots of pattern on that. So then I just put it back onto the flattening uh, unit again, and then we're ready to go for the next part of it. But I have prepped some of my stuff for video purpose, so that we are ready to go. Okay, so there it is all flattened out again. So, like I said, it gives you a nice texture pattern. Let's get that zoomed in here a bit. Hopefully it'll focus there. So anyway, that's how I flatten and texture a lot of my jewelry. Now, with what I've got on here, this is from Spoon Bowls, and I've just linked them together. And it's cut from a disc cutter. My ring, that's cut from a disc cutter. And you can see the back side of it. So some of you ladies um, on the forums that I'm on have just received some of these dies. So I do rings. Uh, this is another one similar to it, except I didn't cut out the middle of it. They are, get these together here, they're the same, except I've cut the center out of one. Because what I'm going to start to do is solder charms on some of these areas here. And um, I texture um, all kinds of different things, fork tines and different stuff. My charm on my bracelet, that is cut from a spoon bowl. Actually, it's this is an iced tea spoon. And that's cut from the bowl, and I did matching earrings. And get down here far enough. My little heart necklace, that is cut from the dies as well. And I just cut one open, soldered it together. And my little flower earrings, they're cut from dies as well, and I've domed them. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that today. So that's the texturing end of this and the flattening. So I'm going to get this thing out of the way so we have a little bit of room to move here with the disc cutters. Now, I have taken these little dies as well, and actually, let's see if I can find one here. This die right here. On my earrings, my little tiny, tiny little flower earrings, I cut out the flower earrings, and then I take the flower and I put it right in the center of one of these, and I place it onto here, and then I put the flower onto it, and I use my Arbor Press for a lot. Um, is it the best way to do it? Absolutely not. If you have the money to invest in doing all kinds of different things, then great. Um, but stay, if you're just starting out and just trying to figure out what to do, with my Arbor Press, oh my gosh, I do texturing, um, I do a lot of my fork tines on here as well. I do spoon bowls. I do flowers. I do my cutouts. I do my pancake dies. I do my doming and I do my stamping all from one unit. Now, the best way to do it, yes, have the hydraulic press, have all of those things. But if you do, if you're just starting out, st work your way up to it, save up for them. And then it's the best way to go with them. Okay. So, um, I have a lot of dies and I am constantly collecting. Now I'm not painted to promote this but I do I have uh, Hammerman Miki supplies 
and uh, I have a bunch of these and I absolutely love them. Um, there are many. Durston uh, is above that. Peppy has them. But I find with Miki, he has a lot of different styles. Rather than just round discs or ovals, you can get a variety. And Nihal has really branched out with his line. And I endorse him. I think he's got some fantastic products. So if you want to check him out, it's uh, Miki Supplies and he's on Etsy.com. You can check it out. Now, but what I'm going to do with these earrings, for those of you that are just starting out, for this style of earring, all I used was this. Sorry, Nihal, I'm going to be kind of promoting this for just a minute. I got this at Michael's. Is it the best? Absolutely not. But again, if you're on a low budget and you're just starting out and you want to get a feel for it, um, I they have they run about $70 Canadian. Now, I picked this up at their store a couple of weeks ago. I have an old one, and I've used it for eight years. I've had no issues with it whatsoever if you continue to lube your items and stuff like that. I got this on their clear-out shelf about two weeks ago for $20. Could I go wrong? No. Uh, you know, it's a, again, it's an investment thing, and um, uh, in this one, I get five cutters. So the two that I'm using to make this earring are these two right here. So... That's basically what the sizes that I'm using out of them is these two. So what I have done, I went ahead. I tend to trace a lot of my pieces onto this, but I never waste. Those of you that know me, I'm very frugal with my metal because even with this little piece here at the top, I can get discs and I can get flowers and I can get little tiny hearts. I don't waste hardly anything. And especially if this is sterling. Don't throw it away because you can melt that down and put it into shot plates and do other things with it. So what I'm going to do is I've got some lube. So it's just um, it's your for the jeweler saw. And I, what I do is I just lube the tips of my, my disc cutters right around there. And then I'm going to line up my first circle. I cut from the inside out because then I can see, I can center everything in the frame and stuff first. So I'm going to get that all lined up in there and then take my cutter and I'm going to insert it in there. I've got it so that the texture pattern is facing down. And then on my Arbor Press, now with the Arbor Press, this is an old hammering Arbor Press. If any of you have seen any of my posts, I say it's my old, and I put it in brackets, hammering press. And the reason why is I have taken, where are we at here? The top. And it does mushroom because I hammer this a lot. Like I said, I use it all the time. So from time to time, I shave down my edges. And I have put duct tape around this to, to prevent any shards of uh, metal coming across into my face. But like I said, I've got my glasses on all the time. And so I'm going to get this line back up again so you can see what I'm doing. All right, you're going to stay there. All right, so I'm going to just double check to make sure that my metal did not shift. Now, these Michaels ones... They do not lock in in place like Miki Supplies does and Peppy and all that. So I just hold my finger on it until I get it in place. I've got a polyurethane pad here because when my die goes through, I don't want it hammering on my metal bench block and damaging the die in any way. So I'm lining it up directly underneath my arbor. So all I'm going to do is hold that in place. I'm going to bring my arbor down and I'm going to hold it there just like that. Now I'm going to take my hammer right and this is a 20 ounce hammer you can try it with a mallet and stuff like that I don't know like I said this is my old unit and I just go to town on it so I'm going to hammer the top of my arbor and push the punch right down through it it's through now like I said quality of product this is not as sharp and then I just take my hammer, my nylon hammer, and I'm going to hammer that disc through. And actually, it just dropped right out of there. So there it is there. Now I'll keep this and I'll do a pair of earrings. So I've got the two of them. So I'm just going to hammer this through. And notice it's still stuck in there. So I'm going to put it on my little block here and hammer it down all the way. So we can get down to the next part of it. All right, bear with me for a second, guys.
Okay. So we're going to bring the... So here it is here. So we've got it all punched out. I did get it a little bit out of line, but it's not too bad. I can still play around with it. That's why I like to trace it. So I have, an, I have a little bit of play at the top here. Now, again, this is not the best. I have a burr right there. So what I do with them, I'll either take it to my other dirty bench, but I have a little tool here that they use for the coin rings and stuff when they cut them out. And it's like a little blade. And all you do is you run it into the inside of it and you just roll it and it gets rid of that outside burr. But of course with this one, I did not get it done upright. So we're gonna continue on. So the next one, I'm gonna back this up a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so the next one, I'm going to do the larger size ring. So once again, take your lube and you're gonna lube your die. All roll it around in there, or you can you can lube your metal if you want. It's not a big to do, one way or the other. And get this going in the right direction. And I'm going to insert this so that it is all lined up with my marker again. Now, because I did go a little bit out of whack, I want to make sure that I make that adjustment. So I'm going to come down a little bit and see this way. I can see exactly. What I'm doing in there all right because I've used my marker to see it so then we're going to put that die back down in there and we're going to put it back on to the bench again lower your ram and that's through I find using like I can do it that I can just punch it out on my mat um, but I find that using the arbor, um, it keeps everything all aligned. Now, with because I'm hammering and stuff like that, I do have to tighten up my ram on it and stuff. But it's not a big to-do. That way, everything is all in line. And it's ready to go for the next piece of it. So, get this guy out of there. So, there is my other piece. So now, like I said, these two all make into other pieces. So that's that section done up. So now all I'm going to do to complete my earring is I'm going to take this to my drill and I'm going to put a little wee tiny, tiny hole right at the top there. The same as what I have done with this one. All right. So hopefully that'll focus here. Get it to stop moving. There's a little tiny flower right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. So I kind of wire them all together. So let's say I've done that. I've drilled it. I've done all that I've done. So now I'm going to dome it. Now I have my doming block here that I use. Now with the little discs, what I do, I have, if I'm doing little circles or whatever, I have the metal one, I have a brass one, and I have a wood one. But because of the size of that disc, it, well, I guess it will. Let's see if I can find one. They're pretty deep, and I don't want my earring to be that deep. So that's why I tend to do a lot of it on the wooden one. So I just put it in there, and I picked this up at Michael's. It's a great little tool. And all I do is I'm just hammering it into my doming shape. It gives it a softer look just by adding a few hammered domes. So I've domed it ever so slightly, but it ch kind of changes the look of it. Like I said, I still have to clean up the inside of this. Um, but what I have done with my metal one, I use my press. Again, I find my area and I have white nylon balls that I got from Amazon. They're just little white nylon balls. And all I do is I put my metal piece down inside the corresponding one and I put it in place and I just bring my arbor down and just a light press boom and it's done just like that there's no effort to doming it whatsoever and to me it gives it a completely different look altogether so get that out of the way so that's the doming so that's basically what I've done I've textured I've flattened I've textured and then I have discut. And I have domed, 
And then it's just basically like before doming, drill your holes into the metal and then do your assembly. How you like, so with mine, I've done a little connection to it and uh, then added a little ring and then onto a ball ring. So that is basically from start to finish what I've done. And I still have these two little discs that I can do post earrings with, or these can be connectors. If I wanted to, I could take these and link them together at the top of this and then do a stud earring on this one if I wanted to. There's endless, endless possibilities with all of this stuff. But I'll just show you just a few of the things that I've been working on. So when I talk about not wasting, I am literally, there's some of my charms. And I don't know if you can see these little wee tiny, 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 tiny butterflies down in here. So I am working on pieces. Um, and again, the, the butterfly one that, this is the largest one that I've gotten from Miki. And I have another couple of dies on its way. So this one here is the largest and there's the butterfly for it. Get my fingers out of the way. So I am playing around with it and I've got anchors and uh, yeah, I've got a lot of different styles that I'm trying to continue working with. But guys, ladies, gents, that's about the basics of it. So like I said, on here, my Arbor Press, I use it for a lot. Let's get this up a little bit more here. Okay, so I take... I'm doing letter stamping. I'm using the Arbor Press for my letter stamping. Get this opened up here. So, I'm just taking basically my little letters or whatever it is that I'm working on. Let's see if I can find a scrap piece of metal here. So, if you see, here's my scrap bucket. And I'll kind of, I keep coming back to it and I cut out little tiny butterflies and all kinds of different things. So all I do with it is I just take my stamp and I put it underneath the arbor. And I'm just going to, or the ram, and I'm just going to hold it there. And again, I find the arbor press is great because my hand is out of the way. It's holding it nice and straight so I get a flat surface. And then I just tap the top. Boom. And I don't know if you can see it on here. Let's see if we can get it focused in on it. It is there. Hopefully you can see it. It's a little Celtic symbol, but it is there. But it took one hit and it hold, held it in place. It was perfect. Um, I'm not getting double hammer shadows or anything like that. So I do that with it. Um, if I can find a piece of metal, I'll talk, show you what I'm talking about. All right, let's take this spoon. Hopefully it'll show, give you an idea with the textures. So I'm going to take my texture plate and I'm just going to lay it right on there. Now I've cut the flowers out of this and then I lay the flowers down. So I may not, because I've, again, the thickness, the difference is in thickness. So I'm going to try and do the thinner area of it here. And all I'm doing is I'm lowering my ram down onto it and I'm holding it in place. And I'm starting to get my design on there. Again, I'm just playing around with it. You can get more focused onto it depending on the style that you're doing with it. So it's giving you the idea that there is pattern that can be done on it. And it's just, I don't have the rolling mill. I have an Arbor Press. So everybody, I hope you really enjoyed this. And I hope it was educational to you at least. And uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, from start to finish, we've just made a pair of earrings other than I have to drill the hole and do the final assembly and tumble it. Other than that, everything is done. Um, it's pretty straightforward, uh, but play around with it. If you have any questions, just give me a shout. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good day.